to uh, the course design practice, uh, this is module 2 for the course. So, last uh, lecture we were talking mostly about why uh, design is so highly needed to develop businesses in the current context kind of scenario and what we figured out is it is all based on uh, only one component which is the user. So, <coughs> in this uh, changing uh, days of competition, the dimensions of competition has also changed quite a bit. If I looked at sequentially in the uh, 60s probably people were very conscious about cost or quality uh, and uh, from 60s to 90s there has been a phase when in a phase manner earlier people were just uh, buying low cost products, but then they realize later that if you invest slightly more in a product and it comes at a better quality then uh, the overall uh, money cycle which is uh, needed to be engaged in such investments goes down because of the persistence of the product over a longer amount of time. So, issues which are related to cost and quality almost got figured out uh, by 90s and then uh, there was a need that uh, how you could develop products quickly with different features and functions and uh, not only that how you could develop based on the customers needs or user needs and improve the product. So, there was an aspect of customization there where some commonality between products were felt upon the major majority opinion in the market about how a product should be, but again uh, because of intensiveness in the competition people have gone into a domain now when it brings about personal customization that if I want to use a product that is convenient to me, I should be able to dictate out the needs that I have into that product. So, that it can serve each and every aspiration that I have associated with use of the product. So, uh, now you know competitiveness today uh, is more about the product development capability uh, in terms of adding features and functions which are scaled down to the mass. Uh, to the to the actual need or aspiration of the user. So, <coughs> having said that let us look at some of the very basic uh, definitional aspects associated with the product what really is a product. So, obviously, product is a set of uh, attributes which are offered to consumers to fulfill their needs or requirements and they act as vehicles which provide or which help in providing uh, some benefits uh, to the users because of which the very existence of the product is. Okay. And the requirement of a product mainly uh, depends on how to satisfy the inherent need of, of a consumer. Sometimes the consumer may not be very well informed about the need, because he is not aware of the current status of products available to him in the market. And so, therefore, his needs also get sort of construed to a direction of uh, the most available products in the market which actually uh, because of the, uh, the new information age and because of uh, the fact that now at a click of a button you can uh, scan and know about uh, what exists there even if it is a very small thing which is existing there. So, uh, therefore, the consumers now want uh, you know they have a very high uh, highly skewed level of need which has to be satisfied. So, the consumer satisfaction mainly will depend on the utility that uh, person derives from a product that he uses and whether the utility maps to his aspirations and uh, therefore, the benefits of consumer oriented marketing activities are to satisfy the consumer and to also achieve of course, the organizational objectives of success growth and benefits and in a way all this goes into what we call the product. So, there are uh, some examples here of different products which are available in the market. For example, there is this uh, uh, job master screwdriver which is a very very simple product, yet uh, I would like to discuss with you some aspects related to this product particularly some quantitative aspects uh, probably the sales life or how many people are involved in development process or design process annual sales revenue so on so forth. This right here is a Hewlett Packard uh, just just a printer, uh, there is a roller blade skates uh, and uh, a, a Volkswagen Beetle 
and a Boeing 777 airplane. So, these are all products from all different size ranges, all different market segments. And if you were to look at some quantitative basis to classify such products, we can actually classify them in terms of their annual production volume maybe, um, their sales overall sales lifetime, sales price, uh, number of unique parts which should be there in such a product. Okay. And uh, again development time. So, the internal development team or the peak size of the team which probably uh, is related to uh, within the organization uh, how much how many number of people are involved or associated with the product development. And similarly, the vendor base associated with the organization which is used uh, mostly for setting up the supply chain. So, external development team associated with the product. Uh, a, a product like Boeing for example, would depend mostly on suppliers because each and every part that is there or that goes into a plane it is so much uh, so less backwardly integrated that there are specializations by different vendors who will have or suppliers who will differently will be differently able to cater to different aspects of parts associated with an airplane and the, uh, the precision, the accuracy, the performability of what they produce is what makes uh, the super functionality associated with such a product as an airplane. Uh, mind you if the airplane is in air there is no control. So, it needs to be all functional and well to do and highly reliable whatever gets into such a system. So, uh, probably the external development team size uh, in this case would be much much more. Uh, then the development cost and the production investment that is needed for starting off these products uh, uh, on or setting these products on the market. So, uh, there has been modules earlier with students that I have personally carried out where some students have answered these uh, in their own manner. And uh, what I request uh, the audience here to do is to without proceeding further on this video, if you could actually answer it yourself. And then later on compare with the numbers that I will share just in the next slide. Uh, you may know what is your apprehension of some products of different ranges or capacities as I showed before in terms of these numbers or quantitations. For example, the student group working on this problem uh, just last semester with us here uh, recorded the different uh, products, the screwdriver, the skates, the printer, the, be uh, the beetle and, and, and the, Bo the Boeing airplane to have these numbers. So, for example, the annual production volume was uh, recorded as 5 million for the screwdrivers, about 1 million for the skates, okay, for the printer another million. Uh, Beetle about 2000, Boeing airplane about 50. Okay. And similarly, all the different aspects like sales lifetime, sales price, number of unique parts, development time etcetera were recorded. Uh, note how uh, the thinking process is that people do think that development time needed for a smaller system like screwdriver is probably much, much lesser in comparison to that which is used for development of an airplane, although they are very, very optimistic estimates, they are probably way off the actual values which should be there. Okay. So, this is a kind of a psychological map about what you know about products and what you uh, would typically respond to when you talk about discussing products. And when you actually see what these numbers are as furnished by uh, the manufacturers, the annual production volume for example, uh, which was recorded in the last slide by the student responses is about 5 million is not even 100,000. Okay. So, it is about close to uh, 1 lakh units per year. So, they are off shifted quite a bit in terms of understanding of the market size. I hope that you probably do better in terms of your estimates. Similarly, the roller blade is again 100,000. The Hewlett Packard desk jet is actually 4 million units. It is uh, pretty close to what people approximated here. Uh, they said 1 million is about 4 times the size. And the Volkswagen a uh, new Beetle automobile is about 100,000 and of course, Boeing airplane is quite uh, accurately mapped to 50 units per year. But when we talk about the uh, years of development or the total development time as you can see a Boeing airplane takes about close to 4.5 years about 5 years to get developed whereas, a Volkswagen Beetle about 3 and a half years or if I just talked about a stainless screwdriver it will actually take about 1 year 
to develop and um, make this product okay, come into place or come into production. So, uh, the estimates given by uh, again this work group were quite off centered uh, or were, were quite off values, uh, particularly because they mentioned 3 months to be the development time of an, of an airplane. Okay. So, it gives an idea of what is uh, the gauging behind different products which exist in the society by a general group of audience which is untrained in the area of product design. So, <coughs> having said that I would urge all of you to actually compare the values that you have written down probably in an earlier uh, slide uh, and you know you could actually compare now and see how you uh, know about products or how you know about uh, uh, new products okay, uh, that exist in the society of all different scales. A similar exercise could be done with other products as well, uh, just to find out uh, your apprehension about how uh, useful products in the society map with respect to uh, these quantities right here. So, when we talk about uh, how to classify products, there are two different types of uh, classifications that could be possible. The first of course, is uh, classification based on whether it is uh, going to be something which you use directly or something where uh, there is a there is uh, there is a value addition overall to your aspiration, okay. but you cannot use something physically directly. So, such physical products are known as tangible products like for example, goods like pen, cycle, uh, a car. Okay. These are some things which you use. Okay. You, there is a thing and this thing can be used directly by a an user and so that is why you can call it a tangible product. On the other hand, there are certain products where you know you, you, you can actually get services out of them. For example, let us say a doctor is a person per se, but he provides a service to you or so does an airlines. Uh, so, does the airlines or the hoteling industry that they do product, they, they do pro provide their products, but products are in terms of services okay, uh, which can be used again by the user. So, this is the basic classification uh, of the first type that is something which is more in a goods form, a tangible product which you are able to touch, feel, associate with, perform and then uh, have a sense of satisfaction out of it. The other one is where you actually use uh, something which is a service provided by a system which is already in place okay, and through that satisfaction you derive mental pleasure or satisfaction. So, this is the first type of product classification. The second one of course, is based on who are the buyers or the users. So, there can be products bought by individual users particularly for personal or household use or consumption. So, these are known as consumer products okay, or consumer goods. And uh, then there are of course, industrial products which are developed for, for a large scale application mostly used for business purposes. So, mostly like for example, uh, a chained gantry lift or a fork, fork lift or even a roller conveyor on an ordinary conveyor for a mass production. So, these are products which again uh, can be used on a large scale by industry houses <coughs> which are in the process of manufacturing at a very high rate. Okay. So, those are industrial products. So, having said that uh, obviously, for developing products you need a set of activities and the activities must begin with the perception uh, of that there exists a market opportunity uh, and also <coughs> this perception should be converted into some innovative steps in between and a design which can be realized in the end as something which is which can be produced, which can be sold, which can be delivered okay, and all uh, what qualify to this which are being produced or sold and delivered by a market and appreciated by the market and used by the market is what a product is really about. So, successful product development definitely result in products that can be produced and sold profitably and this is what the, cut, the, the one statement is which would allow a product to be in business or uh, be valuable okay, to the society. So, having said that now let us uh, uh, look at uh, that value that we are talking about which adds to a society and so therefore, 
the major, major buzzword or a goal here is how to create value through the product development process. Okay. So, uh, it is all about the product, what the product has to offer for example, will give you an idea of uh, what is the value okay, that it uh, can create you know through his existence in, in a particular society. Look at some very famous and interesting examples. Uh, for example, uh, the first name which comes to us is this guy right here, Apple, which has produced many of these iPods and laptops, you know, and uh, then also touch screen phones, which have changed the, the whole business of uh, be it smartphones or be it music out of the music library and into the pocket. So, it is changed quite a bit of concepts uh, by bringing out what you call simply better products and look at what Apple is today is only because of this innovation which is driven completely through its user experience module that they are what they are and in business. So, I will uh, actually take you through about three different products which are uh, available on the market okay, and I would like to uh, also share some of the opinions which have been given about these products and their features by again a student group which has been working with me in the past. But uh, the idea here is that after I take you through these products, you yourself should without going any further on the video, be able to address the questions that I am asking. So, that you can see what your aspirations of how the product is or how you can map it to what the real uh, catch line on the product is or for advertising it, okay, which describes about the various features associated with such a product. So, the three products I would like to share with you at this time are uh, number one, this black and decker snake light. Okay. Uh, so, strong uh, light you know which is used mostly for applications uh, of illumination related to the under hood area in a car for example, or any nook and corner where we would like to uh, reach because of uh, some reasons and are not able to uh, do a justice in reaching because of uh, improper illumination. Okay. So, the other product that I would like to take you across is this measuring set of cups or measuring cylinders called good grips. They are angled measuring cups uh, introduced by a company called Doxo. And again uh, you look at this product and try to perceive what is so special about this product which makes it different than what other measuring cylinders would typically do. Okay. And then uh, the third product that I would like you to look at are these prescription bottles or pill bottles. Uh, which has a prescription in place. These are sold by Target nowadays. It is one of the very famous uh, uh, set of products which have been developed over the past few years, where uh, it gives convenience to the, the customer in this case, who is the consumer, uh, who is actually taking the medication, the patient, okay, by writing probably everything that he needs to take care of while consuming something uh, prescribed by the doctor. Okay. So, our student responses again I would just like to compare uh, for these three products. For the first product, uh, the students responded uh, by saying that it is a product which is flexible uh, and portable. It is self standing. So, basically all these wires can be moved around in any part and it may be made to stand on its own. Uh, you could have lights both ways. Okay. So, there is two way uh, lights, easy grip. Uh, long lasting batteries probably, minimum maintenance associated with the product, uh, quite compact, powerful illumination can be used by children as well. It is very safe and aesthetically pleasant. So, that is how uh, all the student groups working with us last year sort of responded on this particular product. Similarly, on the other product that is the OXO uh, good grips angle cup, um, the responses recorded was uh, accurate measurements, more so because uh, these angled cups have a top down approach of reading the meniscus level, which otherwise becomes a big challenge, particularly when seeing from the sides and trying to register. Good handle design, this grip seems to be pretty good in this particular product. Uh, obviously, the visibility of level top down is much easier than uh, sight wise. Uh, the material is very transparent enabling us to see the color or the level or the aspects related to the confined product, I mean confined liquid which is inside or let us say any, any containment which is inside. 
uh, easy pouring uh, because of uh, particularly the big shape here and you know uh, if you look at it closely there are different measurement units or milliliters so on so forth okay so there are different measurement units which are in place for people to conveniently understand in any different parts of the world <coughs> so that's how this product is uh, appreciated by uh, let's say uh, people who are not so trained in the product development process similarly uh, looking at this particular pill bottle uh, people have given all different aspects related to air tightness of the confine containment confinement the child proof capabilities probably of this lid right here prescription mentioned in the bottle which is a big help for patients who particularly forget taking pills and then there is a color coding particularly this color right here which is yellow it can change from patient to patient. So, it gives you an idea about uh, how such bottles can be used by a group of different users. So, uh, in this particular uh, product description it, it, it so appears that uh, the, the capture of the audience is towards the basic usability needs associated with some features which are innovatively mapped on onto this product. When we look at actually the catch lines which these companies have to say for their products for example, for the snake light uh, from black and decker uh, the catch line which has been written to give uh, aspects related to this product is that with a flexible neck and powerful 4 bolt lithium battery this rechargeable snake light provides illumination for a wide range of products uh, features such as long lasting ultra bright LED bulbs uh, are there in this product. Okay, which is uh, kind of descriptive about the product. So, definitely a part of it has been captured in the response given by the students earlier for example, this flexible neck and uh, being you know um, or containing a, a battery which is powerful or a uh, probably uh, ultra bright long lasting uh, feature has already been described whereas, some of the features which were left over are this rechargeability for example, or you know even think about the reliability provided by this lithium ion batteries and so on and so forth. So, these are some of the features which have been left out probably in the uh, mental mapping of the student group which were untrained in product development about this particular product. Uh, when we look at the statement related to the OXO good grips cup uh, the statement says set of three measuring cups with angled surfaces for reading measurements from above the patented angled surface lets you read measurements from above. So, this is what they are stressing most and this is what probably the most important problem is associated with checking the meniscus level from the sides every time okay, in such measurement systems. Uh, it includes cup, uh, ounce and millimeter markings which makes uh, easy conversion available for people who are untrained, uh, but still want to use them for culinary skills uh, untrained to read scales. Okay. So, handles are soft non slip for a firm grip. So, this is something that has already been captured and eliminates the need to fill check and adjust. So, basically uh, quite a bit of this including the different um, units of measurement or uh, the good grip of the firm or for example, this patented angled measurement design has been captured from a set of people who have just looked at the product probably untrained in the product development process, but still be able to certain. So, same is true for the target uh, pill bottle uh, which is actually uh, also known as the clear x. Okay. So, when target introduced this clear x in 2005 the design of the standard prescription bottle was literally appended. Uh, the bottle now stood on its cap. So, that is one aspect featured color coded packaging which has already been captured as a feature by the student group and easy to read label which is again uh, the prescription part which also was captured. So, it has garnered tremendous praise from design and healthcare communities as well as our guests that is what target has to say for its pill bottle clerics. And in fact, when an interview has been conducted to senior level vice presidents of this company uh, they say that the clerics is one of the elements that differentiates the target pharmacies from competitors. It especially designed prescription bottle that helps guests to manage their prescription apart from containing just the medication safely. It uses a colored ring around the neck of the bottle allowing each family member to easily identify the uh, prescription given to that member and it stores medical information 
So, our guests can reference it at any time particularly let us say a phone number of the doctor or even you know the pharmacy which provided so on so forth. And the best just got better we improved the functionality of Clearex bottle in three ways we made cap easier to open and close while maintaining its child proof properties. This was very important it was captured remember in the response of the students. Uh, we modified the design so the bottle stands upright on either end which is more convenient for our guests. So, there may be people who want you know pills may after some time uh, stick together particularly if we are talking about capsules etcetera because of weight. So, it is probably easier to turn it around once in a while and uh, we add a new coloring option pink to make identifying medications for different family members even easier. So, this is what again uh, the senior vice president of target had to say who was involved in the product design. And if you look at the number of prototypes which really resulted in the final product uh, there were about more than <coughs> 90 prototypes which were done in order to arrive at uh, the final product which is actually the Clearex bottle which is in the marketplace. So, product development is again uh, you know an iterative process of mapping the real need which is underlying uh, this process of all development. So, I like to end this particular lecture here, but probably in the next lecture we will look at uh, product development as a strategy, what are the different steps which are involved and get into some hardware and some tools which are needed for doing actual product scale development. Thank you very much again.